On today's part of my take, we have Baylor star, superstar Jared Butler ready for the Final Four on Saturday. Talk to him. We also have uh, Tate Frazier of Titus and Tate fame, diehard UNC basketball fan, also college basketball analyst. So we're going to talk to him about Roy Williams retiring and the Final Four. Before we get to, oh, we got Firefest. We got a little opening day. Uh, April Fools. Before we get to all of that, Bacardi, Bacardi rum, Bacardi or uh, Patron tequila blended whiskey Scotch blend. Does any of this sound delicious to you? Well, this episode is brought to you by Bacardi Limited. The, their portfolio features some of your favorites like Bacardi rum, Patron tequila, Bombay Sapphire gin, Dewar's blended Scotch whiskey, and so many others. Who doesn't love versatility? So while you're watching your favorite game, why not step it up? From the day to day, just skip the boring stuff in your fridge and make yourself a refreshing cocktail. Maybe a Bombay and tonic to go with that epic matchup. Maybe a Patron margarita to mix with basketball highlights. The world is your oyster when you shop with Bacardi Limited. Make them for yourself. Make them for your friends because you know they'll ask for them. And toast to your favorite teams with this assortment of spirits. Lucky for you, we have a special code so that you don't even have to leave your house to get it. Use the code Watch with. Bacardi, watch with Bacardi, and you get $5 off your first purchase, courtesy of Drizzly, 21+. plus. New users only, void where prohibited, and as always, drink responsibly. 2021 Bacardi, their trade dresses in the bat device are trademarks of Bacardi and Company Limited, Bacardi USA, Inc., Coral Gables, Florida, each rum, 40% alcohol by volume. So go check it out. Patron Tequila, my personal favorite, little Patron on the rocks. Do it with Bacardi Limited. Do it with Watch with, or Watch with Bacardi. Five dollars off on the Drizzly app. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Bacardi Limited. Use that code Watch with Bacardi, and you can get five dollars off your Drizzly order of Bacardi Limited products: Bacardi Rum, Patron Tequila, Dewar's Blended Whiskey Scotch, Bombay Sapphire Gin, and more. Today is Friday, April second. April Fools, guys, get it? Gotcha. I think it might be now. I don't want to be accused of uh, not liking fun, but I think April Fools. We it feels like uh, I was ready for there to be a great April Fools return because last year was obviously serious with COVID. Mm-hmm. No one really hit it. Some brands did. So Volkswagen hit it with the Volkswagen, saying okay. that they're going all electric, so they're changing the K to a T. And then I'm pretty sure Hank's hot seat cool throne of Michael Strahan. I'm pretty sure that was a. In April Fools, wasn't it? Because we even said during oh. the thing we compared it to to Anthony Davis shaving the unibrows in April Fools. It, right. Does he still have? But are his teeth normal? Has still? he come forward and said I don't April think Fools so. joke? No, I don't think so. I'm April still category. I'm just going to pretend that Michael Strahan has gap teeth. The I'm uncomfortable with it. The best one that I saw, the only one that it made also me it was laugh. two days before. Yeah. Well, you know, getting getting when people can't mm-hmm. get got. Uh, DJ Quick had the best one by far. He had on Instagram. Uh, he posted, I'm on my way to the hospital. Someone just shot into my car seven to ten times on the freeway. I got hit twice. Pray for me. And then the next Instagram story four hours later was, oh, yeah, April Fool's. I forgot to add that second part. That's awesome. <laughs> I like that. Wasn't, That's a great one to be like, hey, guys, just kidding. I'm not dead. Wasn't there an NFL player a few years ago that said that they got a DUI and they posted like a thread apologizing for it? And then they came back and said, April Fool's. Like, the joke was, I got arrested yeah. for, like, yeah. I blew a point two zero. The old Marshall Henderson uh, social experiment. Billy did get caught on April Fool's. He actually came in, and he, he the first thing he said to me is, like, seen any good April Fool's? I got my um, – I'm high alert. I know that someone's going to try to get me, but I'm not going to get caught. And then maybe five minutes later, he announced to the entire office, Julian Edelman's going to the box. Mm-hmm. And I said, Billy, what did you just say five minutes ago about April Fool's? He's like, shit. <laughs> got that guy so, got bad. So Damn. this is it was Bruce Irvin. It was Bruce Irvin when he was on the Seahawks. Here's what he tweeted out. This is 2015. Before this hits the media, I just want to apologize to my fans and the at Seahawks organization once again. I made a terrible decision driving after I had a few drinks. I will do everything to get your trust back and will become a better person out of this. Ha ha, how many of y'all thought I was serious? Ha ha, April Fools. I love it. Those are the real <laughs> April Fools jokes that I can go for. Yeah, I like those. The ones that are a little too serious. There's also my my other favorite is when a brand creates something. Uh, but it's actually just a really good idea. So I saw Culver's Restaurants did the Curder Burger, which is just a cheese curd inside of two uh, patties yes. or buns. Yes. I was like, wait, that's not a, that shouldn't be a joke. Like I- you guys accidentally joked on yourself because 
I want that on the menu. Yes, I'm a, I'm a little disappointed in brands this year because you had two full years to cook up these April Fool's tricks, and you didn't. Although I, I kind of look at April Fool's like a lot of drunks look at St. Patrick's Day when they're like, oh, it's, uh, amateur, it's hour. amateur hour. Mm -hmm. Like when you lie 365 days a year, you get pissed off at the brands coming in and try to like act like they run the place one right, day. You know? Right, like leave the bits to us, guys. Um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, you know, there was nothing really great. Anything, Jake, that you loved? Because you are the wholesome one on this show. No, I didn't see anything that stuck out to okay. me. I, uh, when I tweeted about Roy Williams, people were like, "It's a joke, bro. You fell for yeah, it." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna Big get psych out. We're gonna get to Tate with that. I don't think that's a joke. I think he is no. actually retired. Yes. Uh, would be funny if he. Well, the presser is actually in four minutes at four p.m. So. Oh wow! See what we'll he say. says. Yeah. He's probably gonna say Dan Gummit. Dan Gummit. Imagine Sarnet. if he walked in and did the locker room like little dance thing. That like, would April be Fools. incredible. He's he's going to Duke. April Fools! I got four or five stars. Just signed him. Boom, I'm back. I love it. Yeah, it is opening day, and uh, I've got – I have a confession to make. What? I'm doing an experiment this year. I've decided – To watch to, baseball. To own oh. a fantasy baseball team. Oh. I am the proud owner of a fantasy baseball team in a $0 a year league on ESPN with random people. You're my, really going to care about this. No, I am. I care. Mm -hmm. I, I did my draft last night. Mm -hmm. I got Juan Soto. It was Juan Soto no matter what on my card. And uh, I am the Seamhead Express is coming through. That's the team name. I am going to be a major league baseball fan this year. There you go. Just like of the entire league. That's awesome. Just of the stats. That's great for a league with no – you don't know anyone and no money. It's almost more important to me that way. What do we think bet-wise uh, – how quickly till PFT just forgets he has this team? Three weeks. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Three or four you weeks. You want me to run, I'll run, run Actually, through my I'll entire roster? No, we don't. No, we definitely don't need your entire roster. Yeah. No, I, uh, yeah, as soon as you, like, yeah, you're just going to miss a transaction or something or not start someone, you should be like, give up. Or the fact that you don't know anyone. There's zero reason wait, to Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean I don't know? No, no. You don't know league. anyone in the league. Yeah, that's yeah. almost better. Uh I will respectfully disagree. I'm doing this for the love of the <laughs> Usually game. Usually playing fantasy, the only reason you play fantasy is to stay in touch with friends. Right. Well, so I, I had some help doing my draft. One of my friends that I used to play rugby with in college, he was, he's was he been in a fantasy league for 19 years. He's won five out of those years. But the people that started the league with him, two people in the league are now Major League Baseball general managers. Whoa. And they went to the same high school together. Whoa. And so he's like, this dude's legit. My roster's I, fucking stacked. I I'm do, ready to go. I do love when people have their stats that they're ready to go. They're like, listen, 15 years, four championships, yep. three runner-ups. You could say that I know my fantasy it stuff. Is Never missed the playoffs. It is impressive that he beat two Major League general managers who currently serve in that position right now. I would say it's – Semi-impressive, but also, like, when you break down fantasy, usually the person who wins has the most time on their hands. That's Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's he's, like been, he's bounced the, around a couple jobs. The guy who can be the the most active on the waiver wire usually wins fantasy. Yeah. So I think it's made perfect for, for slackers. Like, we can, it actually evens the field when you play against real baseball hands. Uh -huh. I think I also have to call it a rotisserie league. Yeah. Well, how's the scoring work? I'm not this sure. is too much about it, yeah, fantasy baseball. I'm not sure. It's um, very complicated. <laughs> so yeah, opening day is here. Uh, it's fun to do the uh, the the tried and true. Uh, this guy's on pace for this many home runs. Mm -hmm. Season's over. You know the good stuff. You just bring it out for one day. Mm -hmm. It is fun to have. Opening day always does feel like a big deal, and then. Uh, you realize, oh, yeah, it's just cold weather baseball for the rest of the month, and it kind of sucks. There was snow in Detroit today. I love those early season yeah. games in, like, Minnesota and Detroit where the weather is just awful, just, like, shitty. It's, well, it's the snow games, and then you have a month where nothing happens, then you have the fight, and then you have a month where nothing happens, then you have the B delay, then the home run derby. The uh, Did you see in the snow game, Miguel Cabrera hit a home run, but the ball got lost in the snow, so he thought he hit a double and he slid into second. Oh, he accidentally ran fast around it the It was pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty fucking cool. And then cool. Bryce Harper's shoes. The yeah. Clown, clown shoes, bro. Although those don't I, – so I, I when I first saw him, he, if you missed it, Bryce Harper is wearing the Philly Fanatic, basically a, a stuffed animal Philly Fanatic on both of his shoes. But it was the – uh, like practice shoes, you know how like guys will do that you in the warm ups. The he did, he wasn't wearing them in the okay. game, so he gets a, he gets credit for just being very festive about opening day and uh, hope springs eternal and all that stuff. I was gonna say that if if somebody tried that in the NFL, Roger Goodell would call in a drone strike on him. Yeah, during well, a game, guys do it with the practice cleats because that's yeah. when they can express themselves. So I, I saw this one other thing that I'm very excited for this season. Uh, the Giants manager Gabe Ka Gabe Kapler, 
he has a message that's written on his uh, whiteboard in his office that says, win time of possession. There you so go. that's what the Giants are going to try to do this year. They're going to try to control the pace of play and keep the defense on the field as long as possible so they get bored. That's what Gabe Kapler's It might work. Is. It might. He says, like, you, you get, only have so much attention in a three-and-a-half-hour game, so putting them on defense makes it more likely that they're going to make an error. I actually kind of believe that. Yeah. Like old-school smash-mouth baseball. Absolutely. Play a little small ball. Keep them out there. Um, then we also have uh, NFL – uh, pro days are still going on. Justin Fields is now he he has been the anointed one to fall down draft boards for no reason whatsoever. Uh, I saw that there was a report. Dan Orlovsky was saying so he wasn't. Dan Orlovsky was doing the old. I'm not saying it, but people are saying it to me. Mm-hmm. Which I when you do that, you're still carrying the water for the people and giving them credence. And one of the points was that Justin Fields they don't know if he loves football enough. The guy, Justin Fields, who basically brought Big Ten football back. Yeah, the guy that broke his ribs. He, yeah. had, a, he had a Drew Brees <laughs> happen on the field, and then he came back like one series later and dominated. I do think I, I do think Dan Orlovsky is getting a little bit of a raw deal because it is one of those, like, one guy, one guy takes a quote, tweets it, and then everyone runs with the tweet without ever actually watching the video in the context, mm-hmm. which that does suck. Like, admittedly, that sucks. But it is uh, anonymous scout season where teams, I just assume whenever we see, like, Justin Fields slander or Justin Fields, it's a team somewhere in, like, the 5 to 10 range that's hoping that Justin Fields will fall to it. Exactly. That's that's obviously – it's smokescreen season. Right. So if you have somebody from the Jets being like, Justin Fields sucks – I'd stay clear if you have, uh, like, the, the 49ers being like, man, Justin Fields not going to take him. You at, at the very least, you can encourage somebody to, like, try to trade up and waste some picks behind you. Yes. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely smokescreen season. I've just decided that there are too many good quarterbacks. I don't know who to pick out of the lot. I think that I like – I think I like Zach Wilson. I yeah. Think because Although, that throw, if you want to talk red flags, not a captain. Not a captain. And we've yeah, talked about exactly. this, but it's very, very hard to not be a captain – as a quarterback in college. You want to hear a take? It's almost impossible. Billy, this is what you should have done with your quarterback bracket. You should have had Kyle Pitts winning the entire thing. Mm. I think Kyle Pitts should get drafted number one. Yeah. Kyle Pitts. It's like with Tight Josh game changer. With Josh Allen, you want to run through like the things that you have with Kyle Pitts. He he runs like a deer. Mm-hmm. He uh, is a chess piece mis- mismatch. And then he keeps opposing defensive coordinators up at night. Yep. Those are the three things that he does. Uh, negatives, his name is Kyle. Yeah, that's, he does not look like a Kyle. No, at but all. he. What do you mean? I'm just saying. Does we have we work? Describe a Kyle. We mer- work amongst several Kyles who look exactly like Kyles. Yes, Kyles uh, are. Kyles are the. Kyles are funny dudes. Yeah, they're I like Kyles. They're quirky. Yeah, I mean they they rage hard. Uh huh. And they you know pound mo- monsters. They bang monsters constantly. Yeah, but they're uh, you know usually. Are you doing the love life? No, usually a Kyle will also have like uh, the racing strips on the side of their car. Maybe the you know what are you gonna say? Punch walls. You you, you have a mic in front of you. Yeah, they punch walls. Punch walls. <laughs> they care too much about like a sport they excelled at in high school. Billy's so into uh, opening day that he's giving me the signs to steal home. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> like, with a mic in front of. I him. like it, Billy. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, I, I think like if you look at teams that won Super Bowls recently, you can go through the list. They all have dominant tight ends. Is the tight end the new quarterback? Mm, yeah. Because it seems we've forgotten about Gardner Minshew pretty quickly on the They're Jaguars. game changers because yeah. tight ends are the best. Yeah. Uh, all right. What else do we have? We have, oh, the final four. Um, do we – are we expecting it just to be Gonzaga versus Baylor? I think we all are, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to bet on UCLA – to cover, but I think Gonzaga is going to win. It's going to be like a backdoor cover situation. But yeah, I want I want UCLA to win just because I like Mick, I like Hep. Somebody pointed out to me it was um it was Jay Reich five eleven on Twitter. We should be calling Hep Hep C. Yeah, we actually we did um we did uh, a sports advisors and uh, Rico Bosco said uh, Hep's last trip. And we're like, what the hell is he? Is he sick? He's killing. And then someone asked, "What's his name?" And I was like, "Probably hepatitis, right? That has to be it." Yeah, yeah. His his full name is hepatitis. His name is hepatitis C. Mm Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, the uh, I'm excited for the Final Four, but it definitely does not feel like the most anticipated Final Four. Let's just say that it does not. It's going to be Gonzaga Baylor, and we're going to watch it. Yeah, the Battle of Texas, and then Gonzaga versus UCLA, and hopefully Gonzaga Baylor happens on Monday night. That would be. Imagine if we get like oh Houston UCLA would be the lowest watched. 
Yeah. Championship what if? Game well, no, because time. you got UCLA. You you've got a uh, a big it's audience nice out there. Los Angeles. What the time game is the game? Like five surfing prime prime, prime surfing weather. That's you know, five hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people stuck in traffic. Mm-hmm. You can't have that. There's uh, there's the element of Rick Pitino coached Mick Cronin. Yes. I didn't realize that. What a great job. Another feather in Rick Pitino's cap. Basically his national championship yep. if they win. Yeah, that's he, fair. We're going to let him put the tattoo back on his shoulder if they win this That's one. fair to say. Um, yeah, it will be the games. Jake, we're, you're a college basketball expert. How do you rank this? You, you've been to a bunch of Final Fours. I've been you, to one Final Four. Oh, sorry. I've been to a bunch of tournament been games. Been to a Final Four. Yeah. Maybe, you know what? Then maybe we'll ask Billy this question. Right. Uh, no, no, no. But what, where do you rank this? Uh, if we get, can get Gonzaga Baylor, uh, I actually wrote a blog about this. It would be great for like inner college basketball fans, but the casual sports fan, maybe not, they won't set aside their time. If it was Duke versus Kentucky in the championship. Right. Oh, I also, speaking of that, I uh, have to walk back something I said on Wednesday. So I got confused. Sweet 16 had crazy numbers, Elite Eight didn't. Right. So hopefully they don't keep the Elite Eight on Monday yeah. and Tuesday. Yes. So we have some hope. Yes. Well, in fairness to you, we had just re- finished the Elite Eight, so they didn't have the right. ratings right. yet. Thank you, So you Jake. just meant to say I Sweet appreciate 16. That. Yes. Thank you, Jake. Yes. Yeah, I, I hope that they go back to the old way. But it, what happens if there's like a positive COVID test this weekend? I think they're going to delay the entire thing. You see the it. Baylor coach? The Baylor women's coach was yeah. like, no. hey, listen, if, just stop testing. She said no one should get tested <laughs> because <laughs> if you test. get – You know what? Only the winners, only the champions should have access to COVID tests. Yeah. I – I, I do think, uh, yeah, I mean, it would be quite a story. I mean, the Nationals and the Mets having to cancel the first four games of the season kind of sucks. Oh, shit. Do I have to bench Juan Soto now? Yeah, you do. Damn, this You've sucks. Already, you're already behind. Fancy baseball sucks. You already are behind. But what what happened? And Max Scherzer. God damn it. What happens when, um, if there were to be a test, though, you think that they would – they would delay the national championship on Monday, right? It depends. It's, in a, it's in a controlled environment. I don't know. Let's just hope. Knock on happen. wood. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, by the way, Bill Walton never texted me back, but mm-hmm. we did hear through uh, his people that he wasn't allowed to come on because of ESPN. So, oh, okay. Yeah, but mm-hmm. whatever. It's fine. No, that's good. Billy, BK, you got to talk that up. Be like, Bill Walton banned from part of my mm-hmm. take. Oh, yeah. By ESPN. They won't let us have these people on. No, mm-hmm. uh, and then shout out that one AWL who tweeted me saying he saw Bill Walton on his bike and just screamed at him, go on part of my take. So it. just keep doing that, and hopefully eventually he'll just – I don't know, end up in a, a bad, you know, acid trip where he's like, I got to do part of my take Not again. A, a really good acid trip. Yeah, well, a bad one where he's like, just forgets everything. Is like, I got to do this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And then we bring him back to the light. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, there we go, Bill. We're back to the light. Um, anything else before we get to our interviews? Anything else? Anything else? Kittle did a prank too. Oh, that was yeah. Mean. That was it. No, that was actually very funny. That was the funniest one by far because oh, he's our friend. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone thought it was Jaguars. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. And he changed his uh, Avi to a troll face. AVI like is how you pronounce it. <laughs> Wait, which troll face was it? <laughs> it was the OG troll no, face. No, do, you do an impression right now. This bad radio. Do the troll face. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's yeah. Good. You got to pronounce chin, Billy. Yeah. I like that. We've got Roy Williams emotional at the podium, and it's not an April Fool's is joke. Is he crying? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, He's, yeah. He is... That is really the saddest part is we're losing one of the all time best cries. Right. So we can we can get into this with Tate if you want, but I actually do feel like my take about him being a better coach than Coach K has been vindicated at this point. How so? So by the stats, since he's been at North Carolina. Uh-huh. So since he's been at North Carolina, North Carolina has five Final Four appearances. Duke's only had three. They've won the ACC uh, in the regular season nine times to Coach K's three since he's been there. Mm-hmm. They've made the uh, – NCAA tournament. They've only missed it once. Duke has missed it twice, I believe. Yeah, no, twice if we're counting last year. Well, oh, okay. So yeah. We're, okay. Well, they bowed out. Yeah, yeah. But what about Coach K having more championships and more wins? But since they've been, well, because he coached for longer, I think Roy well, Williams. Roy Williams was at Kansas. I think Roy Williams has. He coached more, for a long time. He's got. A, I think he's got a higher winning percentage than Coach K does. Okay. Uh, but yeah, at Kansas, that was that was the previous that counts iteration, too. though. Yeah. And but you could also make the argument that Coach K at Duke had Christian Leitner take him and essentially single handedly won those uh, two <laughs> national champions. Without that one shot against Kentucky, it would be people wouldn't talk about Coach K the same way that they do right now. That's okay. all I'm saying. Okay. I think that Roy Williams has been a better coach since he came to the ACC than Coach K has. 
So it's just defi- it's not career. It's I, you just could, defined as ACC. Yeah, I mean, you could make the argument for career, but I think in terms of the ACC, it actually is cut and dry that Roy Williams has been a better coach since he's gotten to the ACC. Okay. That's not really an argument. Anymore. Although, but Coach K has more national championships than the ACC? I think that's – since Roy Williams got there? Uh, I would say – yeah, I think so, right? No. Two? Three? When did uh, Roy Williams So they won there? in 2010 over Butler, then 2015 over. So yeah, it, same. It, no, and, and, and North Carolina has three. It, no, they have two. 2005, 2009, 2017. Oh, okay. So he, all right. So wait, how many, how many? No, Coach K also won in 01. 91, 92, 01, 2010, 2015. So wait, how but that's many? that's before Roy Williams got there, right? Fair. He got there in 03. That's after what I'm saying. Yeah. Kansas Since how many, Championship. So we're justifying it as when he went to ACC. So how many titles does does uh, Roy have? Three, four, three, three, three? and right. Coach K has five. Correct. Okay, but Roy Williams, that Chris Jenkins shot would have been four. Yeah, that's well, true. It was a tie oh, game, I mean, but you yeah, could do that. With, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. yeah we no, we I'm should kidding. do that with Christian Leitner. <laughs> yeah. That shot missed. The UNC shot went in. Now they're even at four. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I I hate Coach K, but I I, I think he's his resume is still better than yeah. Roy's. Gordon Hayward and Chris Jenkins switcheroo four four. Yep. That's Roy's it. Roy's a Hall of Fame coach, is. too. Yep. Fantastic coach. Um, all right, let's get to our interviews. First up, we got Jared Butler from Baylor, who's playing on Saturday. And then we're going to get to Tate Frazier and talk a little more. Roy Williams, Final Four, UNC. Before we do that, a uh, quick word from our friends at Helix Sleep. Billy, you need a new mattress, right? we got to get you one of these. Do. I do. All right, so Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else with Helix? You're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect by the way you sleep. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows that, so they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattresses great for cooling you down if you sleep hot, and even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. I took the Helix quiz. Uh, I was matched with the mattress. We got these, uh, I think, a year ago. They're awesome. Great mattresses. Very comfortable. And like I said, they make sure that the mattress is perfect for you, your sleeping preferences. Everyone sleeps differently, but Helix makes sure that you will be comfortable on the Helix mattress. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door ship for free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. Just go to helixsleep.com slash take. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you try and uh, you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix is offering up to $200 of all, off all mattresses, orders, and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com. take That's helixsleep.com take for up to $200 off and two free pillows pillows helixsleep.com slash take we're also brought to you for, by our friends at GoPuff. GoPuff delivers all of your daily needs so fast that it's almost confusing from food and drinks to cleaning supplies and home needs we're down 24 7 to uh, show up with a bag of stuff you want how do they do it well GoPuff actually stores 2500 plus products in their local facility so when you order your stuff comes directly from GoPuff to you hence Order in seconds, delivered in minutes. We've been using it all uh, tournament long. It has been fantastic. During the March tourney, GoPuff is giving everyone a chance to save even more money just by buying what they like on GoPuff, and they're delivering straight to you, so they never have surge pricing. Delivery is always $195 no matter what. They created uh, a bracket of their own as well and seeded products according to popularity on GoPuff mobile app. So go download the GoPuff mobile app right now. The winning products... Uh, are then put on sale, so it's great. You get some uh, sales. You get some great products delivered in seconds from your couch. You can order GoPuff. Go download the app right now. Make sure to get in the game by heading to either gopuff.com slash go or don't, downloading the GoPuff mobile app today. Use code PARDONMYTAKE for $25 off your first order as well. Pardon my take on the GoPuff app, $25 off your first order. That's on us. Do it right now. Thank you to GoPuff. Okay, here he is. Baylor's uh, junior, great player, superstar player, Jared Butler. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. He's playing in the Final Four on Saturday against the University of Houston. It is Jared Butler from Baylor. Uh, awesome to have you on. Congratulations, first and foremost. Pretty pretty damn cool to be in the Final Four, especially given everything that's happened this year. Uh, so, has that – What what's the uh, – 
like plan going into the final four like did you guys you, the game was late you guys finished the game monday have you had like a second to let it all kind of soak in and be like holy shit this is pretty damn cool we're two games away from immortality <laughs> yeah totally um when like making it to the final four is just a pretty cool thing um cutting it that's down like just a, a big hoorah or whatnot and um i think it's different for some people like different people they were like even at the celebration, they were like, oh, we got two more to go. Like, you know, don't they're not even happy at that celebration. There's other people that are just like, wow, we made it to the final four and kind of taking like a day and a half to get over it. And um, yeah, so I, but it's definitely important for us to like reset and be like, all right, we got we, it's go time, especially today. I think today is probably like the last day you could ever think about it. Right. Where did you fall in that spectrum? Were you like were you celebrating? Were you were you going crazy or were you like, hey, guys, stop, stop smiling. We got a game to prepare for. <laughs> No, I was um I was one of the guys like when I woke up it like I was I was I was over it so I think that was good. So do they do they tell you how to cut the net down? That's always confused me because it seems like there are some guys that get up to the top of the ladder and they know exactly how to like cut down the net properly so the next guy gets his piece. Uh, they don't give you any advice. I take I, I usually take like a big piece. Like I try to get the biggest piece I can get. Yeah. And, like you know, and I'm like I need to you know I don't know just put it on my hat and just have extra just in case, but. Yeah, that's me. I, they don't tell you anything. So uh, I was reading an article about how, you know, you last year you obviously were thinking about going to the NBA. You came back to Baylor. You worked on your defense. And uh, one of the things that you said helped was you were watching film in a different way. What was that? How did you, like, for me, defense always comes down to really effort, but you clearly got so much better in, in so many different ways. How did you do that? Yeah, uh, that's a great point. Like, most people don't watch film for defense and, like, you know, they don't see different plays where they could have, you know, gotten a steal or like just a better technique. But um, yeah, I was like, um, just just want me and one of the assistant coaches uh, just watch film. And um, there'd be so many instances where I was like, man, I could have got the steal or I knew that that pass was going to, you know, come. And um, a after just watching film, I was just like, all right, I'm I'm not hesitating anymore. I'm just going to, you know, make the play on the ball and um, and see ahead. And watch the film helps you do that to see ahead, and um, yeah, that's that's really helped me a lot this year. When you were growing up as a kid, were you were you daydreaming about playing in a Final Four? Like, because I, I remember when I was a, a little kid, I, I would think about like hitting the last shot, the buzzer beater, and there would always be like a particular play I would run. I do the countdown out loud, like three, two, one. Is that is that something that you thought about growing up? Is there like a specific dream that you'd have or a play that you'd run in your own head, picturing yourself in this moment? Yeah, for sure. I was always the kid that's like. I wanted to go off in the um, incident of tournament, like just have like, you know, just like 10 threes in a game. Like that was, that was my dream. Um, the game winning shot was like, kind of like, yeah, I guess everybody done that. Like as did that, but um, like, I just wanted to go off and just have like, you know, back to back to back to back threes. And just people were just like, wow. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was kind of like my dream. Well, that could happen though on Saturday. How, how much harder is it to shoot in Lucas oil stadium versus the uh, places you guys played your earlier games, you know, Hinkle and, and uh, all the other uh, places that the games were taking place. Yeah, it's it's, it's so different. Um, just the backdrop and um, you know how far the the back wall is from the you know the the backboard. So it's a little perception change. And uh, it got to me. I, I'm not gonna lie. The first the first game we played in the um, in the Lucas Oil. And um, but like at, at this point, I've I've um, I've like had to come overcome that and just be like, all right, like I'm we're gonna play on these courts and like this is gonna happen and. Um, I've, I've been shooting better since then, so uh, yeah, I'm feeling good about it. Are Are you fully vindicated now in your decision to return to Baylor for another year? Like, have you officially silenced the haters since you got to a Final Four? You're like, look, I made the right choice. Yeah, um, I, I I think I went to another level and saying like, you know, I I came back to Baylor, and now like I don't play for people's you know vindication or validation or you know I don't play for people's you know, um, opinion on me. Like at this point I've, I've, um, become just at peace at just where I'm at in life and my basketball career and who I am as a basketball player. And, um, so like, I think that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm over the, like, you know, trying to prove the haters or whatnot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a double for you because you, uh, didn't go to the NBA and also you were originally enrolled at Alabama, then transferred to Baylor. So you have like, I mean, I, I know that you never talk bad about Alabama, but you watch that game and you're like, "Oh, well, that could have been me on that, you know, court losing in the uh, Sweet 16." Yeah, totally. And um, you know, but I think yeah, Bama's done a great job this year. And um, yeah, 
no, it's, it's it's a good feeling to be, you know, one of the final four teams, man. It's, it's, it's amazing. Credit to you. You never talk bad about Bama. That was nice. Good job. It was a really good yeah, political answer. that was a really good job by you. Do you like Alabama? No, I, I do. Um, the reason I left Alabama wasn't, like, some, like, you know, nasty type thing. And then most of the guys that are at Alabama now, um, like, I only know about three guys, like John Petty, Alex Reese, and um, Herb Jones. So, like, and there's a new coach. Avery Johnson's not there anymore. So, yeah. So when you uh, decided to go to Baylor, I read on Wikipedia, so it's probably wrong, but it said that you decided, to, like when you were being recruited, you were confused why they weren't recruiting you harder. And that was that actually like ended up being a great technique where it was like, nah, we don't we don't want this guy, and it made you want to go there more? <laughs> no, it, it, no, it didn't. Um, so like the reason why I was mad they didn't recruit me earlier is because my high school coach um, sent two other players to Baylor, Ricardo Gallers and Tweedy Carter. And um, so, like, it was like a no brainer, like the next best kid under the coach, like, you know, they're going to they know who I am. And um, they just took to like the last month of my my junior year, you know, the summer period. And um, then they finally offered me. So I just felt kind of disrespected. And um, no, so it, and I ended up coming to Alabama. And I think I, I, I held on to that grudge a little bit. But um, like I just ultimately God just said, no, this is where you need to be. And, and we both um, had to like let go of our egos, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so Saturday, you're playing Houston. Let's say there's 10 seconds left. You're down one. Who's taking the last shot on your team? Are you saying to Coach Drew, like, hey, I'm the guy? Or or maybe not. I don't know. I, I need to know who's 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 taking the last shot on the Baylor Bears. I think it's usually um, – it depends on who's got it going, like, throughout the game. Um, you know, I think it's easy to tell who's like, you know, who's been hitting shots and like in the last five minutes, like what happened. And um, but I, I think either way it goes, like um, it, it's just like it, that's just a weird question because it's definitely just falls on who's got it going and, and who's got the best chance for us to make it. I was just trying to get a headline grab because I wanted you to be like, yeah, I'm taking the last shot. I'm the man. Yeah, but I, you're you too nice. I know you're too. <laughs> I know. But I had to take my shot. That was me taking the shot. You got to take it. <laughs> OK, how about this? You're you're the coach, but you're also playing. But you're two different people. But as the coach, if you're drawing up the last play, who gets the last shot? Oh man, that's a that's a, that makes the the question even harder. I'm not gonna lie. But I think again, you just got to go with the hot hand at the time of the mm -hmm. moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you said earlier like you didn't dream about hitting the last shot necessarily. You dreamed about just going off. So at what point have you went off during a game? What is that like? Twenty four, twenty six points? Is that going off? Yeah, or like if I haven't missed the three the whole game, that that means I'm usually I'm usually on, or like like I'm, that means that that's um indication for hotness, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think you, you the West Virginia game uh and the Kansas game this year, I feel like you were that was you were in the zone in those games. Um, let's oh. ask it this way: you there's four Jared Butlers and then one uh, Masio Teague. Who does Coach Drew have take the last shot? Uh, who's ever got the hot hand? If Mason's hit like four call gods in the game, like I mean, or five call gods in the game, then you got to go with him. If Jared's what? hit like four or five three pointers, then you got to go with him. Wait, what's a call god? Oh, uh, you never seen? Do you watch our games? Yeah, I do, but I I, I did not. Well, I oh, I have watched you, way too much of Baylor. Uh, I just said that Kansas game, <laughs> the West Virginia game. I you also beat uh, my team, the Badgers, in the second round. But uh, I'm not cool enough to know what you what you guys are doing. I know I I know the mullet guide can dunk, which is crazy. Uh, but what is the call god actually like? How did that start? Uh, Maceo's like um, signature like um, celebrations after he's the three. He's like call god. You know, it used to be just like just call me, but now it's like um, call god. He raises up to the sky. It's like you know, okay, he needs some mm -hmm. help. Okay. So if you hit if he hits a couple of call gods, what's the difference between calling god and and praying? Kind of the same thing. Yeah, same thing. Totally. Well, same one thing. God's on speed dial, I'd assume. Yeah. The other is just you're one, hoping he gets the message. One is like you're leaving a message right, after the tone. Mail, yeah, right. he, God sends you direct. He hits the ignore button, mm -hmm. but call God. It's like I got a direct line. Yeah, when you pray, it's delivered. When you call God, it says it's got a read receipt on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to snap God. Yeah. I, just make just it disappear real quick. I like quick. to page yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, on his, he's still got a sidekick. <laughs> yeah, he's still got a <laughs> Uh -huh. I shoot him a quick page. page like, hey, can we get this hey, game? I might, I might use that. Yeah. Oh, so, what, what's it like right now uh, in the bubble? Because I, I would have to assume that there are some times where you just get bored. Like, there are only so many team building activities you can do. 
I know that Alabama right. said they went to the zoo, which actually sounds amazing. I'm still thinking about that zoo. But, like, what have you guys been up to to kind of keep you together and, and keep your minds from wandering too much? Yeah, um, it's a grind because, like, you literally have nothing to do. For me personally, I've just been, like, trying to find good movies on Netflix, which is, like, the hardest thing in the world because, like, you know, it's just it's just Netflix. Um, we play a lot of Connect Four. And it's been a lot of competitive Connect Four games, and we've been, you know, just doing that. We play some cornhole in the in our meeting room. Um, some guys got PS4s, or whatever, and um, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Just you know, grind it out. You know, what was the level of panic in the Villanova game uh, when you guys were down early? Because I, you know, you guys do have such a great team, and I feel like the the strength of, of your team is that you guys when you want to just ratchet up the defense you feed all off that and you guys start basically runs on defense but you guys are down at half was there any panic was there any like uh what's going on guys why aren't we playing better or was it like hey if we just get a couple stops here we're gonna be back in this and beat them yeah there wasn't any panic but um I think it was just like a all right like you know like we gotta like um buckle down or like get serious or like all right there's no more fooling around like you know um and like and I think that changes all, all the aspects of our game and sometimes when we're not hitting shots it can affect our defense but I think we change from like all right our defense is gonna you know be good no matter what and we're just gonna live with how it is on offense and um yeah I mean once our defense picks up it's it's, it's pretty hard to beat us but um yeah but yeah I think that was the change it's it's fun watching when you guys are like all right we're gonna just start shutting teams down because you yeah. jump on them and it's like holy fuck now they're up 10 out of nowhere um you yeah. you back to netflix real quick a little birdie told me that you're a big rom-com guy what's your favorite rom-com. rom-com i'll always say the um um the breakup with jennifer anson and yep. uh, yeah Vince that's, Vaughn. that's a good one yeah although yeah. that one like it doesn't really have a great ending. It's kind of an like. Well, I guess I guess they kind like the of. Part. You like that? You like that they <laughs> yeah, s- like they split that. up? Wait, no, they get back together at the very very end. No, they look at each other. They, they see each other yeah, on but the street. The look in their eyes, you can yeah. tell. I think they're back. To- Do you think they know. get back together? I don't know. I think so. Like I don't know. I don't know. But like I love that. Like I love how we're just even debating about it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just guys being dudes. That's a good. What about that's a good one? What about Love Actually? That's a good one. And the Love all- Actually. Yeah, Love. Have you never seen Love Actually? Like explain the plot a little bit. It's like six different plots going on at once. It's pretty much the best rom com of all time. It's fantastic. You'd love it. It came out like what two thousand five, two thousand four, two thousand three, two thousand three. Yeah. It's would, I, would, I, would I actually love it? Yeah, I think you. If you really do like rom coms, you'd love that. He's making a joke. Huh? Oh, actually, that's good. <laughs> Fuck. That's really. God damn, that's good. Oh. What man, about uh, when Harry met Sally? Uh, no, never heard, never seen that one. Is that no, that's the one where she comes in Katz's deli, and then the other lady goes, "I'll have what she's having." Mm. No, you'd love it. <laughs> yeah, you'd love. Actually, that you might not. Yeah, uh, PFT, ask your question about the layups. Oh yeah, good point. All right, so I've been I've been watching a lot of film on you guys this year. I've noticed. I don't know if it's something that you're coached on, but uh, your team tends to shoot a lot of layups, like a lot of runners kind of in the lane where you don't really jump. You almost put the layup up a half step earlier so you don't give the defense a chance to like key on that and go and go up on and swat it. Is that something that you guys actually make a point of emphasis on? No, we actually don't. Um, we've never talked about it in practice. Like we've never like, oh, this is like, you know, this is like a little finish we do. It's actually just an end game type thing. Dang. All right. Mm. Like, well, you do it a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, I, I've noticed it too. I mean, you, got, you guys just might also be faster and better than everyone too. Mm-hmm. So that also plays into it. Because yeah. I've noticed that that you guys are really fast and really good. So yeah. yeah. Do you think sometimes you dunk too much and too hard? Mm. Mm. I've I've have thought about that. Sometimes you know you just kind of you got to be a little nice sometimes because you don't just want to disrespect the game, but. You know, and then there's other times you're like, if that was, if like there, if I, if we were on the other side, they would dunk it, you know, just as hard. So yeah, I was gonna say, I listen, if I could dunk, I would only disrespect the game. I would just be constantly disrespecting the game. That seems yeah. like the funnest part of the game is to disrespect it. Yeah, no, but at the same time, <laughs> you know, 
You're too nice of a guy. Yeah. You're a genuinely I mean, they, nice but, guy. I like it. But have you gone back and, and like watched the tape of that game against Wisconsin? And just there were probably like six or seven points in the game where it was just like, all right, we get it. You're you're so much better at basketball than was. It's yes. unnecessary it to sucked. just keep jamming it through the crust of the earth on these guys. No, that, that was actually a pretty fun game. Um, yeah, I know. Like, for you, it was awesome. You guys were really fucking good, and you you locked yeah, down yeah. on defense. It must have been a lot of fun. But like, but like, I felt like Wisconsin was like really like um like they came into the game pretty confident. Like after they beat North Carolina by like twenty, and they're. Just, just like, oh, we're going to be Baylor too. Like, I don't know. I felt that, but like, I don't know if they were actually thinking that, but I just felt that going into the game. So maybe that was why. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a fantastic award that happens every year where Jim Nance gives his tie to the best senior on the team that wins the national title. Um, you've probably heard of it. It's probably, you know, the most coveted award in basketball. Is there a senior on your team right now that you kind of have circled as being the guy that's going to get Jim Nance's tie if you win the whole thing? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, it's really between Mark Vidal and Macy O.T. Um, and that's like a tough one because Mark Vidal has been here for five years. He's been committed to Baylor since like eighth grade. Um, you know, just just ridiculous, you know, Baylor for life type dude. And then there's Macy O.T., you know, just, you know, heavy contributor, you know, just, you know, big, big time competitor. Like, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think you got to build a statue you for both of them you got to give the net to both of them oh Damn. i like that so the the other guy with a the statue there robert griffin has he reached out to you has, is robert griffin like around the team is he giving you guys like uh attaboys or like hitting you up and, and cheering you guys on no he doesn't um he has reached out when we played kansas i think i want to say last year um he came to the game he was like courtside that was pretty cool i didn't get a chance to talk to him but um, yeah, no, that's that's about it. Yeah, I don't think he's he's not that involved. I don't I don't know what else he does with the football team and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, I had one last question. Actually, I actually have two last questions. Um, do you ever <laughs> Baylor fans? They do the bear thing, like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever look up and you're like, this looks kind of ridiculous? Because they show it on TV it's and it's like a bunch of you know grown men going like this. And it looks a little – it's kind of like the Texas – It is awkward. Yeah, the, the TCU horn frog when everyone's like this. It's yeah, a little yeah, weird. Yeah, like, yeah, it's it's all weird. Like, most majority of the time, it's like a weird thing. Like, <laughs> um, But I think that's what makes it, like, you know, cool. Everybody's being weird at the same time. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Every time I do it, I'm like, oh, this is kind of awkward every time. Every time. Yeah, like, yeah. You know. Okay, that answers my question perfectly because it, 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 you're right. It looks weird. It feels awkward. But if everyone's doing it together, it's cool. <laughs> Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it's actually a, a genius hand sign because you can't go horns down with it. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to go down. Mm -hmm. You can't turn it down. Like yeah. it's hard to turn it upside down. If you guys, if you guys win, are you gonna go coogs down? Or are you gonna go like oh, this? Yeah. Ooh, Shock no. down. Do, do their sign down? Mm -hmm. Ooh, no, I don't. I don't think it's. It's not about us beating Houston. It's about like us getting to the championship game. So it's like, why would we even do that? You know? Yeah, that's yeah. true. It, you would be opponent. the first to do it, though. Yeah. That'd be cool, too. Um, My last question was, so fans, obviously, uh, the legalization of gambling, have uh, people, do people tell you the spreads? Do they, like, whisper to you? Do they say, hey, like, nice shot there at the end or anything like that? Are players aware of it? Uh, I get a lot of, like, um, Instagrams or DMs when, like, um, like I just so happen to, like, mess up the spread or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but like, well, I, I mean, sometimes like I, I just get DMs and stuff like that, and I just like uh, that's about it. But like, nobody ever like comes to me and is like, oh, this is the spread. We'll do, we'll do you do you get people uh, like what's the meanest thing someone said to you on DM? <laughs> I can't say it on here. They're just like, thanks, F. Jared Butler, for just <laughs> messing up my life, and it's just like, all right, man, like I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man, it's you're apologizing. Don't don't apologize to those people. It is yeah. it is crazy when you like, cause you know, obviously we're passionate sports fans, but. You do have to I, – I jokingly tweet all throughout the tournament, they're just kids. But it's like part of the reason – you know, part of the entire dynamic of not getting paid, which hopefully will get fixed eventually in the NCAA, is like you got to take it a little bit easier on them. Like you can't – it's not the same as pros when you're like bashing guys online and stuff. Yeah, no, you're totally right, man. So next totally year right. we'll motherfuck you and then we'll feel fine about it. So just get ready <laughs> for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll um, get ready for it. Well, thanks, man. This has been awesome. We appreciate you uh, taking some time. Good luck on Saturday. I think 
Uh, I'll say it. I'm Everyone rooting wants for to you. see Baylor versus Gonzaga, so let's hope that we get yeah. that. And uh, good luck in the game. Yeah, I appreciate y'all, man. It's been fun. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Jared Butler is brought to you by our great friends over at Liquid IV. Liquid IV is the best way to hydrate when you push your body hard or if you feel run down. You got to stay hydrated. You got to make hydration a priority. It helps you feel healthier on a day-to-day -day basis. With one stack of Liquid IV and 16 ounces of water, you get two to three times the amount of hydration as just plain water. It's a water multiplier. It contains five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange, it's got as much potassium as, as a banana. It's healthier than sugary sports drinks, no artificial flavors. You don't have preservatives. You have less sugar than in an apple. It's made with clean ingredients. You got non-GMO, vegan, and free of gluten, dairy, and soy ingredients in there. The optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium delivers water and nutrients directly into your bloodstream. It's the perfect balance to help you hydrate quickly and more effectively than water alone. One stick of liquid IV and 16, ounces, and 16 ounces of water gives you as much hydration as two to three bottles of plain water. And they're donating four million servings in response to COVID-19. They're donating uh, servings to hospitals, to first responders, to food banks, veterans, and active military. Liquid IV has donated over 10 million servings globally, so they're doing some good. And you can get it in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use promo code TAKE at checkout. So you get 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code TAKE when you go to liquidiv.com. Here he is, Tate. Okay, we now welcome on a friend of ours. It's actually his first time on. It is Tate Frazier from the Titus and Tate podcast. He's actually sitting next to Mark Titus wait, in their wait, car. Wait, 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 sorry, sorry. Oh, wait, we're not even. I'm sorry. Okay, we're we going to start again. We were getting hacked. We're, sorry. We're, we're in the middle of getting hacked on Instagram. So it's a whole thing. <laughs> I swear. That's actually real. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm no, sorry, guys. Right. Tough day. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, we now welcome on a uh, friend of ours, first time on the show. He is of Titus and Tate podcast fame. It is T uh, Tate Frazier. He's in the car right now with our other friend, Mark Titus. Mark is uh, texting while driving. Very illegal. Uh, but, <laughs> Tate, you – so the big news today, Roy Williams has retired. And yes. I thought of you first. You're a diehard North Carolina fan, UNC fan. You went there. You're from there. So we thought yeah. – who would be better to have on than you? And also maybe talk a little Final Four, which we can we can loop Mark in at the end of that. But so let's start just off the top. Um, how many timeouts do you think Roy Williams is bringing with him to retirement? I think at least five, Dan. Uh, first and foremost, it's uh, it's great to be on the show. I uh, you know big fan of the program from afar. Uh, Mark Titus sitting right next to me, been on the show plenty of times. Listen mm -hmm. to those shows. Uh, so it's great to be here. Second. You asked about North Carolina. Um, I did not expect this. I'm in Indiana right now. We're at the Final Four. Titus is giving me a tour of Indiana, his home state. I'm seeing, you know, the Basketball Hall of Fame. I saw where they shot Hoosiers today. I saw Hinkle Fieldhouse. I'm having a great day. And then in the middle of all this, Dan, I, I get a, you know, text from my brother that just says, oh, no. And, I, you know, I'm thinking something to my family may have happened. You know, I'm like, okay, like, like what's going on here? No, Roy Williams decides. He's not a good basketball coach, and uh, it's time to hang it up. And I just watched the press conference. I'm in a restaurant. I'm, like, tearing up as I hear him talk about North Carolina basketball. And uh, this whole day has just been a whirlwind. And uh, the fact that I'm in Indiana is probably a good distraction, but the rest of it is not so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I, sad. I, I do like the fact that you guys are always together. Like, me and Big Cat always get the question whenever somebody sees us in public without the other person. Like, hey, is, is your co-host there with you? But you guys, it's actually true. You guys actually don't ever – you guys sleep in the same bed, right? Yes, yes. That's that's the common misconception. Yes, we are always together. And uh, But, no, in general, like, with Titus being here, it's been nice because we just did – I don't know if you guys saw this. Two or three weeks ago, we did an emergency Brad Stevens podcast, which mm -hmm. is all about, like, where will Brad Stevens go next? What is the move for Brad Stevens? We realized it wasn't IU, but now America wants it to be Carolina. And I want to come on your show nationally and say – we don't want Brad Stevens. Let's put that out there. What? We don't want it. Why not? Like, why, why do I want a floundering NBA coach to be my coach? I'm trying to win championships. Oh my god! I hope so. he. I hope he's now the coach of the Tar Heels next year, just for that <laughs> clip. Just because you put yeah. that all on the record. Me too. 
Me too, BFT, because if that's the case, then I, I am literally going to have to riot because I do not want this to happen. Send him to Duke. He's a private school coach. Send him to Duke. <laughs> you, so, you're going to get Hubert Davis, and you're going to like it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no comment. No <laughs> yes, comment. I, yes. Uh, <laughs> do you want Wes Miller? They're going to ex- promote from within. I, I I am a uh, I am a West Miller believer. I want West Miller to be the coach at some point in his career. I think if it had to be now, I'm much happier with him being the head coach than you know maybe some other candidates that Big Cat was just throwing out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I love West. Car- you know, Carolina basketball. West Miller knows really well. He knows how to recruit. John Shire, who's the coach at Duke, assistant coach, hates West Miller, which lets me know mm-hmm. he's a really good coach. That's how the Duke guys are scared of him. Uh, so that gives me more of a, uh, you know, emboldening opinion on him. But I will say in general, if you're North Carolina, you got to go outside the family or at least make some phone calls, at least call Mark few and say, Hey, Mark few, do you want to leave Spokane, Washington and make, you know, $8 million a year at North Carolina and Chapel Hill? I don't know. Let's see what he th- Let's see what he says. Let's mm-hmm. call Scott drew and see what Scott drew's up to. Let's call, you know, we can't call Billy Donovan because Roy Williams hates Billy Donovan. So that's not really a, you know, in the conversation. But in general, North Carolina, make the phone calls. Let's see who wants to take the job. Yeah. You know, Calipari, Calipari's already reached out to Carolina saying, I'll take the job. Yeah. What about Brad Doherty run it back? I mean, yeah. his recruiting class laid the groundwork for Roy Williams. Absolutely. People forget that. You're right, BFT. Without Jawad Williams and Jackie Manuel, you're not winning that championship. What? Without Melvin Scott, you're not winning that championship. <laughs> yep. what, about, what about Rick Patino? Ooh. So these are this, this is what the, the dark web is saying. Patino to Carolina. Why not? Why, why not why not shoot it to the moon? Um, I'm saying in general, uh, you know, Ar- Argyle's not a thing for Patino. He's a New York guy, so he's got to stay north. I like yeah, that. So- I've got I've got jokes that I'm not going to say about Rick Patino because we are a pro Rick Patino podcast. Mm-hmm. But if I were to Same. say something Same. about Rick Patino, I would say like that that ain't tar on his heel. You know, mm-hmm. like not not a natural fit there. I, I it would be fun to see Rick Patino get like a, a big job again, obviously, but um, what do you think is like the the timing with the Roy Williams thing? Because I have a theory that it's more about like he said he's not the man for the job right now, like in this day and age. I think yeah. it might have something to do with the name image likeness thing happening right now. There was just you know the Supreme Court just heard the NCAA. Basically, the NCAA got bent over in front of all the justices of the Supreme Court yesterday. So things are yeah. going to change. And I don't know if Roy feels like he can adapt to that. I think that Roy Williams had, you know, I think last year really hurt him, right? You know, you have last year with Cole Anthony, you got the injuries, you're not going to make the tournament. And in general, you go from having Kobe White, Cam Johnson, two lottery picks, a number one seed in the tournament. You lose to Auburn, but, it's you know, it's okay because Auburn makes the Final Four. And then you come back to that. And then you have this season, which is worst case scenario. You have the talent, but you also have to play the game of, I'm appeasing dads. It's it's a big time for college basketball dads. Like if you are a a college basketball dad that's involved, invested in your kid, if you're a Marinovich of sorts, you're doing great. Walker Kessler's dad, you know, I think he maybe broke Roy Williams a little bit. He comes in there and just says like, my kid should be a stretch five. He should be shooting threes. And Roy Williams is like, your kid sucks. Like your kid should not be playing. What are you talking about? I'm a three-time national champion. And then you mentioned the NIL stuff. I think that, adds another layer to it, which is, do I really, do you want to teach an old dog new tricks? No, that that's the rule. You don't do that. And Roy Williams is the example of uh, a college basketball guy of the 20th century of the, the old guard per se. And he doesn't want to adapt. He doesn't want to change. And I don't really blame him per se. I just wish they had a plan in place because I think the plan right now, as big cat said, it's Hubert Davis. Hubert Davis will probably be the next head coach in North Carolina. And I love Hubert Davis as a guy. I don't know Hubert Davis as a coach. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. So uh, how much – I mean, I do think that the – it's not the game has passed Rory by, but he did feel like out of the big coaches, uh, you know, if you want to say the big programs, Cal, Bill Self, Coach K, yeah. he struggled the most with, like, the one and done and getting those – you know, just stacking the team with freshmen and letting him go to the lottery the next year. Like, do you yep. think that had something to do with it? Because he it did feel like he never was able to fully embrace that. Where Coach K, credit to him, he's a dinosaur, but he did adapt. He's changed his whole program. I told Titus this uh, in this in the fall of 2009. There was a Skype call that changed everything, and it was Harrison Barnes, and he was skyping in to say which school he was going to go to. Everyone in North Carolina. I was in high school at the time, senior. 
And everyone in high school was saying, you know, Harrison Barnes is going to Duke. He loves Coach K. He's going to get his business degree at Duke. And then he Skyped into Roy Williams and said, I'm coming to North Carolina. The number one recruit in the country is going to North Carolina. We all celebrate. We're dancing on Coach K's grave. We're like, RIP, you guys have Kyle Singler and Brian Zubek. LOL, good luck. Meanwhile, little did we know, some, you know, six months later, Brian Zubek would, you know, illegal screen his way to a title. And Kyle Singer would shoot out of his ass and beat, you know, a, a, a Butler team in the championship game. And Duke basketball would then get Kyrie Irving. And Duke basketball would then, like you said, big guy, go into the one-and-done era, which is the decade of them being able to dominate on the recruiting trail. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, you know, just in general, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, North Carolina at that time, I wish I could have captured the moment. I wish I could have enjoyed that, like, three-month period before Duke got back and dominated. And I told Titus this today, Coach K won the war, right? Yeah. Like, like Coach K won the war. Like, in 2010, 2009, fall to, going into 2010, Duke basketball was dead. Carolina won the war. We are one in 2005, one in 2009. Duke has no hope, and uh, he was able to outlast and endure. So con congratulations to him. I have a spin zone for you because it seems like you're down. Here's the spin I'm zone, down. okay? Uh, unlike some other teams out there that recently mm -hmm. had a hiring uh, take place, Chris Beard is already at Texas. Shaka Smart is already at Marquette and Brad Stevens is staying with the Celtics. So you can't yep. be you can't have three high profile guys turn the job down, yep. further making it an embarrassment that they have to then go get a guy who's never coached a day of college basketball and yep. has been quote unquote called low energy to be the head of your program. I'm not talking to you, Titus. I'm talking to Tate. So that's good. <laughs> I will say this. In general, I think the North Carolina job never gets offered to anyone. I don't think that there is a phone call that's made to a Mark Few, or like I said before, none of those guys get called, and Hubert Davis just gets bumped up, and that's kind of where we are. And as I told Titus earlier, if Hubert Davis is the guy, then I think it's an 18-month trial period, right? You see what 18 months looks like, and if it sucks, and if it looks like it's Matt Darty 2.0, unlike what PFC said with the recruits, maybe if he's got the recruits, we keep him. But if it's Matt Darty 2.0 and things aren't going well, you got to go outside the family. You got to make a real hire. I wish it would be Wes Miller. I wish it could be Jerry Stackhouse. My long shot is it could be Rasheed Wallace, right? Rasheed Wallace is a high school <laughs> coach. Oh, yes. yes. That's what I that want. That would be awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm saying. Ball don't lie. Uh, both teams played hard. Think about that. After a game, both teams played hard. A ball don't lie. Those are two great answers to all the press. You don't have to do anything else. I will say smoking blunts after Carolina games probably isn't what Carolina fans are necessarily looking for. But for me, sounds pretty good. I mean, so you, th those are my long shots. You play on Tobacco Road. You can't be that picky. You know, you can't be like, whoa, marijuana? No, that's not our culture. Like, we, that's right. we just that's, stick to the hard we, stuff. We invented this. Well, it was just a different plan. And yeah. people will then now say, when I when I get excited about the idea of uh, Rasheed Wallace going to be coach at, at UNC, people will be like, well, he's never coached in college, so how can you say he'd be good, but Mike Woodson is bad? Well, I would say to that, Mike Woodson is 63 years old. If you get a guy who's yeah. a little younger, like a Juwan Howard, so to speak, and someone who maybe can talk to the kids and not be like, back in my day when I were playing in peach baskets, yeah. you'd have a little bit of a better chance yeah yeah, yeah. All, all those all those 17 year olds that grew up loving the fab five dan yeah that was, that was uh, i mean uh, 17 year olds do love yeah. rasheed wallace uh That's, yeah and what about juan howard being on the miami heat championship team you forgot about That's that right yeah yeah all those all those 14 year olds are getting recruited right now are like man you know who i loved was, was juan howard on the 92 michigan team That's yeah well, uh, yeah they, they love the black Sox. I, yeah i also well, think just like a, a coach that that rich that walks in the door and like you can it's public information to see how many well, he's made probably like 150 million dollars in his career yeah like that's cool yep. you want to play yeah. for that guy do you hey Ty, uh titus you know that when you get to 65 that's usually retirement age so mike woodson is going to be there listen, in... listen. oh two the years reason... two years the reason Carolina fans are all shook up about Roy retiring is that he waited till after Mike Woodson already accepted the <laughs> If only he would have done this before, there could have been a bidding war. And we could have figured out which is the better job. We could have figured it out. Right. Does Mike well, Woodson want to go to Carolina or Indiana? We'll find out. You bring but now, up, we'll never know. You bring up a really good point and something I love to do, which is talk about just like what are the best jobs. Like if you were to rank college basketball jobs, 
I would put UNC, I mean, definitely top five, maybe top three. Yeah, I mean, for me, I would, Titus and I were just talking about this. I think that the the top two jobs in college basketball are Kansas and North Carolina, and they're interchangeable to me. So it's like I can go to Kansas and go to Lawrence and be king and be able to do what I need to do with Adidas. I go to North Carolina with Jordan, do what I need to do, get the kids that want to play because of the prestige. You got Wilt Chamberlain or you got Michael Jordan, right, at the end of the day. Uh, Kentucky is probably number three. On that list for me, I, I could understand. I know Kentucky fans, I feel them right now. They're like coming at my neck for saying they're number three. But we've seen Kentucky be a Billy Gillespie time. We we, we know what, you know, Calipari has been able to do. But that's a Calipari spin on Kentucky. I don't know what Kentucky is without Calipari. They want to find that out. So we'll see. Uh, I think UCLA is the fourth best job in the country because, again, you got L.A. behind you. You got John Wood behind you. You got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar behind you. So you got a good setup there. Um, so those are pretty much my top four. And then I think my fifth school would probably be Indiana. And I know you guys are going to laugh, but I think Indiana would probably be my top five. I, I think that in general, you just have kids that want to play there because of the you know prestige, tradition, whatever it is. And you have Indianapolis, which has a ton of, a ton of basketball talent and, uh, you know, the surrounding area in general. So I like recruiting states. I like fertile recruiting states. And I like basketball states. So I think those are my top five. Jobs. I agree with you. Indiana is definitely a prestige job, a top-of-the-line job, which just makes the Mike Woodson hire that more baffling. <laughs> right? Like, that's – I totally yeah. agree. I said it before they did the hire. Yeah. I was like, Indiana is, you know, you basically the same list that you just yeah. listed where it's like you got yeah. a couple of the Blue Bloods that have been relevant in these last 20 years. They're Man. number one. And then, you know, what? What's up? I cannot, I cannot wait for Greg Gardner to get fired in like three years. Yeah, and, and Shaka yeah, Smart will just, will just move 90 <laughs> miles west. Yeah, Alondo Tucker is going to be your new coach, and then you're going to be like, I like it. I like where he's a legend. He's ah, uh, he is a legend. He jumped out of the fucking gym, dude. He was he couldn't shoot to save his life. He was. Uh, you don't need to shoot to score. You don't. You don't. UCLA is a perfect example. You don't need to shoot to score. He just got to you don't play need to good, score to win either. You got to play free throw defense. Yeah. All right. Let's talk a little. Let's talk a little Final Four. Uh, we will now let Mark join the program after the cheap seats comments that he had there uh is it just guaranteed are we are we looking at gonzaga baylor i'll let you go first yeah uh, yeah probably i mean gonzaga is going to smoke ucla for sure i think houston houston's an interesting matchup for baylor but i think ultimately houston and baylor are pretty much the same team and houston's just not as good at, at doing what baylor does so that's but I, I can see Shooting. I could see Houston winning, but but UCLA has no shot against Gonzaga. Yeah. No shot. No shot. What about Hep C? No the shot. The magic of Hep C up in the stands. No shot. <laughs> Damn. No shot. Yeah. I, I will I will kind of piggyback that. I think worst case scenario is that Houston wins as far as like entertainment value. Because even if UCLA upsets Gonzaga, Big Cat, you know this, we get the Wisconsin, Kentucky moment from twenty fifteen where America's just like, Oh my God, I can't believe that Goliath fell. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the idea of UCLA being David is hilarious. You know, the idea of a yeah. team that has eleven titles playing three programs that have no titles is now the underdog in the final four. Um, that's pretty ridiculous to me. Uh, I think Houston winning is worst case, though, because if Houston's in the title game, then Gonzaga or UCLA will beat them, in my opinion. So yeah. I uh, and Baylor's got like a weird Texas thing. They have an assistant coach at Houston that has a son that's a coach at Baylor. I don't like any of the, the connective tissue there. So there's a little bit of a, a Houston upset that I see. So I'm, I'm terrified of that. If Houston does win, though, you'd have to if you're an Indiana fan, you'd be like, man, the one that got away, Kelvin Sampson. The one, the, one that, the one that put that program in, in the depth they, they had to the, – Kelvin Sampson screwed Indiana so badly that Dan Dockett ended up being the head coach. I mean, that's all it really needs to be said. That's, that's a perfect that. sentence. That's it. Like, you think Indiana – I mean, for God's sake. Wait, it's, it is it is hilarious, though, looking back at what uh, Kelvin Sampson got fired for and what the whole scandal was. And I, I saw, like, Pat Forty wrote an article about it when it happened, calling it, like, an egregious miscarriage of uh, leadership by Kelvin Sampson. Yeah. He, he was texting kids. He he sent, like, a few text messages out of season. And now looking back right. at that scandal, it's like it was nothing. It was it was literally nothing that he got fired for. It, it, it's literally legal now. Like, it, <laughs> yeah. it was legal, like, almost immediately. I will say, in, in, in Indiana's defense, and, uh, like, I think Sampson – was probably going to end up not being the right guy anyway for like off court stuff. Um, the, 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 at a certain point, 
and Indiana fans would have revolted anyway. But uh, I don't know. I think he could have won enough to, that it wouldn't matter. Like, there's a lot of off-court issues and uh, th- that w- – whatever. We don't need to get into it. But uh, um, I, I, I think he, he would have won. He would have probably won enough that people wouldn't have cared anyway. But there was – it was a little more than just the phone calls. The phone calls were just – but, yeah, that is frustrating that it's legal now. And if you did it now, no one would even care, especially, like, given the FBI. We were, we're in a post-FBI world where, <laughs> <laughs> like – like that doesn't even register at this point, given like Will Wade is on wiretaps. Yeah. Called. He, <laughs> and nothing yes. happened. Yeah. And nothing. And Sean Miller. Yeah. Wait, yeah. wait, Titus, I'm going to actually say something nice about Indiana real quick. Cause I actually do think Thad Mata is a game changer. I'm being honest. Yeah. So you're, yeah, you. you're old coach you. who is a great recruiter who knows how to run a big program. How much, like what is his exact role going to be? I don't know. I, I have no idea. I, 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 I tried to ask him and he, I don't even think he knows. I think it's just like, <laughs> just kind of, yeah, he's just kind of there. He, he's just the guy, you know what his role is going to be? He's going to be the guy that has his arms crossed in like row six that they cut to at least once a game. Yeah. And they just show him. And they're like, and of course, Dad Mott involved in the program and yep. he's just got like an Indiana shirt on. No one can really define what he does. But that's it, what he is. But, but if you're a Hoosier fan, that's like, you're you're basically yeah. hoping because he knows all the high schools. He's obviously knows the area really well, recruits right. Ohio, recruits Indiana. So he, I like, as much as I joke about Mike Woodson, if Dad Mott is actually involved here, that becomes a real kind of tandem. I love that you're talking about Mike Woodson like he's never coached a game of basketball. No, he right? has. And he has a coach college. Wouldn't you say college is a little different? <laughs> college is harder. No, college is different. They're just kids. Dude. They're just Dad, kids. He's going, he, he's going to be coaching against like Greg Gard and Chris Collins. You're, you're acting like this is like going to be the hardest thing. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> tough. Do you have you did you not yeah, see did you not see Northwestern's December when they were playing four out and it was he was changing the basketball? Yeah, you saw. They beat Ohio State. <laughs> yeah, he saw it. Yeah, he, he said saw. no comment. Yeah, he said he no comment. Yeah, Chris Collins is a fucking savvy mind. I do like the idea, yeah. though, of, of Thad Mata. It's important to just have a guy that the cameras go to in the crowd. It does take heat off the coach when you have somebody. Right. Like, when Spolster took over in the heat and, like, the, the cameras were just always on Pat Riley in the stands. Like, exactly. It's good to yeah. take the heat off of an ex- inexperienced coach that has never before coached coach a game at that level. Basketball. Yeah. That, in fact, in fact, I want to volunteer my services right now. I want to get involved with Indiana. I want to be that guy that uh, – I want to be involved in the program. And every time things are going poorly, cut to me and just be like, of course, like Mark Titus has a lot to do with what we're seeing right now. <laughs> yeah. And just associate it – associate failure with me so that way I can be the fall guy. And uh, I, I will gladly fall on the sword for, for coach if they need me to. Um, <laughs> all right, last question. Uh, Tate, I noticed you didn't answer my question. <laughs> How many yeah. how many timeouts do you think Roy Williams when he cleans out his desk for the last day tomorrow he opens up a drawer and there's just like a thousand timeouts that he just never used when when yeah. you, when someone was making a run on UNC I, I I think that if if I'm if I'm right about what NFTs are I think he can turn <laughs> the the timeouts into NFTs and then he can become a millionaire I'm gonna That's miss that so idea. much though Roy there's there's nothing and Roy is a Hall of Famer I loved you know I, I like UNC yeah. basketball I, I I think he's a hilarious coach and very good coach but there was something very special about a team going on like an 8-0 10-0 run and Roy just sitting there and being like not gonna use my time no timeout yeah <laughs> deal with it yourself <laughs> yeah it was like always a Dean Smith thing right you gotta learn on the fly like like I'm not gonna help my team out but like at certain times like you said Big Cat when you Texas A&M goes on a 16-0 run yeah. in the tournament you say all right I think we should have called a timeout at some point yes. yeah so yes. I uh I love Roy Williams he saved Carolina basketball I think a lot of people forget that Carolina basketball was 8-20 and when I was a kid you know I went to the blue white game the year they went 8-20 and I watched the blue white game it was like watching two JV teams play each other. Adam Boone was our point guard. Brian Morrison was our shooting guard. And Jason Williams, Jay Williams, was at Duke dominating, and he wanted to play at Carolina. So I saw the worst of the worst of Carolina. Roy Williams came, saved the program, won three titles, did all he could. So, like, at the end of the day, I'm happy that I had the run that we had, but I also – my biggest fear is being in Indiana basketball, and I say that with love. You know it could I mean? always be worse. Like, yeah. So yeah, much like, love. Like, I, I just don't want to be that. So, like – 
my hope is that Hubert. I know Titus is right here about you to could, hit me in the face about that. No, but like, <laughs> no, you could be Wisconsin where you're like always good oh, enough. Oh like, no, 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 my friend, what? my friend. I I have the self awareness to know that they'll never win a title, and I don't they'll think never win a title. and I don't think they're anything they're not, which means that I have happiness. Indiana fans, <laughs> they're much like Nebraska football fans, where oh, they think they here think the days, the glory days, are right around the corner from coming back. Right. Right. And that is torture. That is true torture. Yeah, because as we know, all of the best football recruits every year come out of Lincoln, Nebraska. And if they could only just keep them in state, it would be fine. <laughs> Which is get out of here. I, 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 do you think Mike Woodson? Do you think there's a chance Mike Woodson might fall asleep during a recruiting visit? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Hubert what? Davis. As I said, I as I said when he was hired, Big Cat. If if you're tell if you everyone keeps harping out on how old he is, the man does not have a gray hair on his head. <laughs> true. Not a single one. That's true. a fact. Not in his zero not in hair. His <laughs> true. True. He's obviously not that old. That's, that's the Coach fact. K test. As long as you stay black, you're good. You're, you gotta keep the hair black, dye it, whatever it takes. Like that's the Mike Woodson. Coach K will uh, die at a hundred with jet black hair. That's do, true. Do you think that yeah. like ultimately? I know you said that Coach K came back after Carolina had buried him. If you were to put yeah. like Coach K versus Roy Williams, settle a bet. Who had the better career coaching? I mean, better career. This is like a LeBron Jordan conversation. It's like, look, Coach K, by all accounts, is by far the better career and everything. But if push comes to shove, if you ask me who I want to be my coach, it's Roy Williams 100 out of 100 times. Mm -hmm. Not so, biased yep, at all. Agreed. Not biased. I'm just saying, I want the guy who actually cares about me, not the devil. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? I agree with One that part. Other. Yeah, I agree with that part. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, guys, enjoy uh, Indiana. Uh, what do you? Where people can watch you tomorrow, right? Yeah, we'll be three x three u basketball. We'll be on Twitter. Uh, you know what I mean? It, it's the same thing every single year. All the conferences come together. They have a team of four guys. They play three on three basketball against each other. It'll be great. And then uh, you know, from there, Titus and Tate YouTube, Titus and Tate the podcast, and uh, yeah, we're live in Indy for the final four. Yeah, uh, got have have Tate back on for God's sakes. Like, why do you, don't wait for the the worst moment of his life as a as a Carolina? No, that's when we want to do it. Yeah. yeah, when Mac Brown yeah, retires, no, we'll have yeah. you back I, on. Honestly, yeah. it couldn't have been a better first time, guys. Yeah. Every time I come on your guys' show, he's sitting right next to me, and it's just weird. <laughs> Again, like, we we are next to each other all the time, yeah. so I, I do feel sad every time. Yeah, when Sam when Sam Howell gets uh, an injury. We I, Week one, yeah. Week one, he gets an injury out for the year. We'll have you back on. Can I can I say this? Uh, Caleb Presley will back this up. Uh, North Carolina is a football school. Uh, always has been. Always will be. And uh, you know what I mean. Sam Howell for Heisman. Yes, that's all it is. Yes, I like yes. it. That whenever we have them on in the future, it should just be like one as the primary guest, and then the other person has to sit there while we roast them. Yeah, we. Cut, yeah, right. This is great. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. You guys are the best. All Thank right. you so much. See you guys. Thanks. Later. See you guys. Bye, guys. Tate Frazier is brought to you by our great friends over at Bright Sellers. Bright Sellers, you've heard us talk about them before. You can take the Bright Seller quiz. You can be skeptical going into it that you're like, hey, I don't know if these people can really figure out what kind of wine I like to drink, but guess what? It works. Their quiz is going to ask you questions about what flavors you like, then it's going to recommend wine to you, and it's going to send them directly to your house. Sometimes if I go into the wine store, I don't know what I'm getting. I just look at whatever has a cool label that's in my price range, not too cheap, not too expensive. I get that. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I'm disappointed. But uh, with Bright Sellers, they're going to pair you with unique wines using their crazy accurate algorithm. It takes a 30-second quiz, and then you just let the wine magic happen. They're going to pair you with six wines that fit your taste profile. It's a wine subscription service that helps you find wines you love without the normal intimidation and wine pretentiousness that you're used to. It's actually a great treat to come home, and you have wine waiting for you, wine that's been delivered directly to your door. Uh, it, it gets me excited. If I come home, I've got a delivery of wine. I'm like, guess what I'm having for dinner tonight? That's right. I'm going to have a bottle of Pinot. I'm going to have a little sheesh with my dinner tonight. Bright Cellar sources their wines from all over the world, France, Portugal, Australia, South Africa, California, the classiest countries, and many more. The best part is that if you do not like a bottle of wine, White Bright Cellars will work with you to include a replacement bottle in your very next order. To top it all off, you get access to exclusive premium wines from private wine labels if you are a member of Bright Cellars. For part of my take listeners, we're giving you 50% off, 5-0, 50% off, half off your first six bottles, your your first six bottle orders from Bright Sellers. Go to brightsellers.com slash take, that's B-R-I-G-H-T-C-E-L-L-A-R-S dot com slash take 
to receive 50% off your first six bottle order. Grab your passport, a wine glass, and come explore the world of wine with Bright Cellars. Okay, let's do some fire fest. Oh, we got breaking moves. Breaking moves. What happened? Breaking Billy's fired. Moves. April Fools. Breaking moves. Okay, that cow is dead. That cow is dead. Strand thing was the April Fools joke. Moving boom, on. Boom. Boom. Oh. Boom. Called it. Suck it, Hank. Through your normal size gap in your teeth. Damn. What, what was an advertisement for? Actually, I don't care. Well, tell us. Uh, he has a new app com- coming out called the Play Barstool app where you can <laughs> Oh, <in> nice. <laughs> new contest is he keeping it or week. no? Uh, so he's not keeping it? No, it, that was, it was, yeah. Okay. Gap is back. Okay, the gap, gap is, is back. back. Got it. I, I wonder if he looked at himself and was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And yeah, what if he incepted himself into being like, you should actually do this, Michael? Yeah, all right. Yeah, there it is. Goodbye to the gap. Update. Um, all right. Fire Fest of the Week. Hank. I have a couple. I have a, a live Fire Fest that's unfolding as the show has been going on. Uh, but our, our Instagram is getting hacked. What? What did it post? Uh, we got a, a email login that was like someone logged in from the Czech Republic. Yeah. And then I got another email login. This is all as the show is going on, so I'm trying to deal with it. IR, I, IRL. In real time. IRT. Um, and IRL. Yeah. Oh, this sounds like broken Roback all over the again. The email on your Instagram was changed from Hank at Barstool. The phone number has been removed on your uh, Instagram Uh-oh. account. Uh, so we're working on it. I, I'm talking to Paul, talking to Instagram, trying to get that fixed. So th- did they post anything hilarious? Because uh, it, Spin Zone, this is the best day to ever get your shit happened. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, they haven't yet. I don't I don't know what's going on, but yeah, if anyone posts anything, it's it's not us. I hope it becomes Unless just it's a great like tweet. a LeBron James me. Stan account for the day. Yeah, just goes crazy on it. Yeah. My other fire fest though before that was that uh, this on Monday or Tuesday, I forget which day it was. We were doing a live stream. I was sitting next to Coach Dougs, and there was a picture of me looking like extremely short next to him. Uh, and that got tweeted yeah, out a bunch of memes. That. Yeah. And then I lashed out uh, and then uh-huh. just started chirping you guys unnecessarily oh, because yeah. I was upset because there was a picture of me looking short. Damn. It was honestly pretty um, immature of you. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that was PFT. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's it funny. was. It was. <laughs> I looked perfectly normal. It was Photoshop. So normal you had to Hey, you remember that picture of Hank pictures, when he had that big yeah. chin? Yeah, yeah, that was funny. Let's all talk about that instead. You were so <laughs> not mad that you posted <laughs> bad pictures of Hank instantly. Yeah. I big listened. pictures of me. Yeah. It was a real picture of you looking short, and then you lashed out and started digging into the Photoshop archive. Uh, Hank, it, it uh, was just a, to make yourself feel better. It, no, it was a good meme. Gonzaga was playing so much better. Uh-huh. And so then I had to put up a meme but, talking about the game that we were watching. Also, That's our job. though, this is this is what this is what really you know has has kept me thinking about it because <laughs> out of the blue on Friday, out of the blue, like literally out of the blue, it was Friday night. Uh, I got a tweet. I was about to tweet the fat looking, no facial hair Photoshop pic of you as a reply to that girl who made the gas station comment, but I didn't. So it's like PFT knew it was a it was a messed up thing to tweet, and then he mm-hmm. I was like, thank but you. But he, he was hurt. He was hurting. So I, then he was, was shown hurting, to and be then he small. was just like. And he was he instantly went to the I'm gonna bring everyone else down with me. Right. No, just Hank. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't even Hank's Hank. fault. It was your fault for being short. Yeah. Not, mm-hmm. It's the live stream. If you want to talk about it, was it was real. It's Marlon's man's fault. It was real. It yeah. was his real I thought he was his stepdad. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It was real. So yeah. I I, I understand where you're going going with this, Hank. I Hank, feel bad for you. You would you would never post a Photoshop picture of me looking shorter than I normally am, would Again, you? Again, that was Liam in the first place. You've <laughs> always like four <laughs> years ago. You've <laughs> always you've always you've always held that against me when it like was never I'm just an innocent bystander. I thought you were gonna fight me when I came in the office the next day. No, yeah, I, 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 I was only upset because it was like realistically small looking. Mm-hmm. If it had been it's cartoonishly small, yeah. it was a very good Photoshop. Yeah. That's why he's the best. All right. Well, which, I think you're like seven inches shorter in the picture, so you're saying it's realistic. <laughs> <laughs> then Doug's? No, well, the, the the Photoshop in question, first of all, was from Rosillo. I think the yeah. Rosillo, yeah, like uh, Mount ago. Rushmore of like yeah. gym guys. Like yeah. if you uh-huh. want the timestamp, it was legitimately four years ago. Mm. But uh, PFT's holding on to that, right? And you're, and you're still like, holding on blame to me when I literally like I walked in the office listen, the next day. PFT like stepped up to me with his. This chest is how out. you get short guys trying to fucking invade all of Europe. I'm, they I, just hold it in their chest forever. In my tiny little chest, yeah. my my small little heart is filled with a uh, yes little pequeño sized piece of rage. Yeah, uh, yeah. You listen. I may have been wrong to post that Photoshop, 
But in the moment, you got you got to get the internet talking. You got to get the internet moving off. So, um, no no regrets. What do you, that, Billy? It's a replay from two years uh, ago. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody's I, laughing, Billy. I just that was such an awesome. <sighs> I just thought they walked off and won. <laughs> they showed DD rounding the bases. He hasn't been on the team since <laughs> two seasons. Well, I just saw the game. Such a back. genuine. <sighs> Yeah. Oh, yes. That was so sweet. I love it. All right, PFT, your fire fest. Uh, my fire fest of the week is that I got the vaccine and I'm not I can't I can't post about it on social media. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be that guy that that tweets it out that Instagram stories it that puts it on his Instagram page because like uh, that's lame. It's like what the vaccine doesn't work unless you put it on social media. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell people so like I but I don't want to like use any platform that I have to tell people that I did get the vaccine today. Right. And after getting the vaccine, I'm basically half bat. I'm Batman. I'm a superhero, and it made me beat, beat Hank in ping pong. Yeah, sweep him. In fact, but it's good that you haven't said it. I'm not going to say it because, like, no one, you know, you know that guy that's like, "Hey, I'm a back swole. I'm, mm -hmm. Hey, look at me. I got. I'm not going to get sick, and you guys all are. Yep. I don't want to do that. Uh, so it's just tough for me to keep my mouth shut about something like that. But yeah. that is the podcaster's burden. Yes. Um, all right. My fire fest is when we were in Detroit this weekend on Monday. I had a few hours free time, so I went and visited our good friend Tony Scheffler who is a varsity uh, women's head coach at his high school. Uh, and I gave them a pump-up speech before, I think it was like state quarterfinals, and then they lost by like 40. So, <laughs> yeah, it was bad. What'd you say? I don't know. Just I guess I didn't fun. say no, like, What did you say? I was like, you guys, like, this has been a really tough year. I, w I have watched a couple of their games because I Tony's a good friend, so, like, he'll send us a link and I'll watch it. Um, and, like, you guys are great. You know, keep playing defense. And Tony's really proud of you. He probably doesn't tell you guys, but he tells me all the time how proud of you. And everyone was like, great. This is awesome. They were pumped. It was great. We took we, we shot uh, half-court shots to, like, loosen it up before the playoff game, and they got fucking smoked. Mm. So well, they probably would have lost by 50 if it wasn't. I'm good. retiring from the – from the pregame speech did we did we give a, a pump-up speech to that team at some point via uh, facetime there's yes. there's a couple I, times yeah. i've sent a few videos i did one with you i did one with gronk with a rod we've we've there's been some pump-ups throughout the years but this one was the first live in flesh and it did not go well mm. at all like it, that's they got like, really beat that's like in the office when pam's like hey jim can you talk to my dad and make my parents not break up <laughs> yeah and then he's like sure no problem then boom divorce yeah what so, did you say yeah that's uh, whatever, you know. Get them next year, but not with my speech. We'll 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 stop doing speeches. Uh, Billy, your fire fest. Uh, my first fire fest was falling for Julian Edelman's uh, April Fool's prank. It, it wasn't that you fell for it. It was that you you were so confidently telling me that you're on high alert. Uh, April Fool's is like the purge. It's like that's the best way to describe it. Twenty four hours of just like foolery yeah like no. billy i think woke up early this morning he's like not gonna get got this year <laughs> he's got he's got post-its on his mirror like yeah. a memento remember what day it is yeah <laughs> anyway i got got and uh my second fire fest is i think it's time to neuter my dog yeah mm. when you told us the story i don't know if it was just me yeah it was just you yeah billy was like um i might neuter my dogs at some point i was like you should neuter it now because that's the right thing to do and he's like well he's been like it's fucking jizzing. chickens no he's you. been jizzing all over his bed no and I, it, billy he's was like it's fucking hilarious your that's dog, not funny dude. Dog, no, 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 no not my bed his bed uh well, I, you guys I've, have the same bed no, no i have a very well-trained dog um besides the he's jizz. never been aggressive he's never humped anything you know he gets the casual rocket but like the best dog ever, like really well tempered. I was in my head like, okay, I'm going to let him grow. Like let him like, you know, so he doesn't get the hip problems later in life mm -hmm. and you know, the nasal stuff. And I was like, honestly, I might not neuter him. Cause I think it would be cruel to like neuter him in my head, but yeah. I will. But, uh, yeah. So it's time because he started, I, I've looked at his bed. There's like, yellowish white stuff oh all yeah really he's kind of, coming every, it sounds it's like nocturnal. he's not very well trained Billy. no he's you very live, well trained he's he not gonna fuck you bro but, no especially dude, but after you neuter nocturnal him. emissions it's yeah. nocturnal do you emissions. do you think like just stepping back outside of this for a second like do you think that the chickens chickens dying frogs getting fucked that's dogs uh, jizzing do you think any of this is normal <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just laying it all out. I'm of, just saying what you one say. One of those things is a lie. <laughs> the, you're right. You're the chickens right. One out of three. Didn't die. The chickens didn't die. Well, no, you said that he's not Jizzy. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. No, it's it's pretty typical. Chickens die. 
Frogs get fucked. No dogs. Dogs jizz. Yeah. You mm-hmm. you're, you're no, but I'm serious. Like These are all he goes stories. like back in time every time he goes home. Yeah. Doctor Doctor Doobiddle. Doctor Doobiddle. <laughs> Doctor Doobiddle. <laughs> Doctor Doobiddle. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So so Billy. <laughs> No, but it's actually it's I could actually hilarious. picture Billy as being one of those dog owners that's like I, I'm going to neuter my dog, but I want it to fuck once. I want it to know what it's yeah. like, and then I'll cut its balls off. Yeah, if you have a <laughs> He's been fucking in his sleep. <laughs> no, show him the way. No, he, way like, with the chickens. Anyway, do you hear him? He, well, you know how dogs like yeah they dream run in, they right run in dream. yeah and yeah you hear him fucking in his dreams. No, I just he just like his bed's you know a dark color, and I went over and I was like. What is he doing to his bed? Is it slobber? Oh and then I realized. God, Billy. Oh, anyway, my God. What tough. a life. What a life. Um, all right, uh, Jake, do you got a fire fest to wrap us up? Yeah. It is officially the return of the Schwitz. Oh. Walking to and from work, hoodie and jeans. I'm a big sweater, and it's, like, uncomfortable now. So Yeah. Yes. Might have to start readjusting. I know you said Big Cat last week. Yep. You can't really wear hoodies anymore. Dude, it sucks. And I just, yeah, the sweating. That's why I, this, every single year, this happens at the exact same time. I'll, like, overextend hoodie weather and be like, fuck, now I got to lose weight. So yeah. now I'm not eating any carbs and it sucks. Yeah. You got to hey. s- start having, like, a, an undershirt that you keep at work to change mm-hmm. into. Mm-hmm. The Triple S hasn't been cold recently. We might need to get it yeah. cold again. Because usually that's the great thing. You can walk into the office and the Triple S is freezing. What's the Triple S? Stool Stream Stadium. Well, how can you get involved in that? You download the play bar still. Oh, shit. Totally nice. free. You know, you know what's crazy? So uh, because I, because I swept week. Hank today, like Hank didn't win a single game and I beat him so resoundingly. Wait, what do you mean he didn't win a single game? He didn't game? win a single game against well, me. Well, how many games did you we, play? Well, only two because I but won both win, of them. He didn't win any? Yeah, he didn't win a single one and I beat him so resoundingly wow. that somebody won $1,000 for betting on me. Damn. Wait, did now did Hank come close to beating you? No, no. It was actually a blowout. It was 21-16, 21-16. And, oh. and it could have been way worse in both guys. I did like the spin around shots. I was taunting oh, him. No. I tried to give him an extra point when he compl- almost completely whiffed on a serve. The is vaccine is on the banned substance list. So is this true? It's all Hank? kind of an yeah. asterisk. I told them, uh, not, I, Hank, cut this part out. But when I got the vaccine, which I'm not going to mention, I told them to put a floater of steroids on there. It was like, just mm. top me off. So is this all true, Hank? Technically. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going by the factual thing that we do sometimes yes but you know, you it was an april fool's joke yeah. yeah that's right that's true you know what Hank, win one. i'm gonna delete and also the shirt pft's wearing was it was so nice i just was yeah it's, it's a throwback flustered. yeah you know what i'm gonna do right now just for you hank i'm gonna i'm gonna delete the tweet is that uh no one's seen it probably yet. pft is that uh is that salmon salmon color no no this is pink Hey, just be careful, dude. Yeah, no, it's it's not right. orange enough. I checked it out. If you're gonna be part of White Boy Summer. We we're not wearing salmon. Billy, he got milkshake ducked. Oh, really? Chet well, Hayes no, is problematic, no, dude. That's crazy. He didn't get milkshake ducked because we all always knew he was problematic. Yeah, like it was. Bad. He's not a good. We're not laughing with him. We're laughing at him. Okay. Also, nice job, Billy, because I know you learned milkshake duck last week. So <laughs> good job using it in a sentence right away. Uh, all right, numbers. Do uh, you got a fact for us, Billy? Um, the picture of me in the gym locker room, uh, I was getting vaccinated. It was Johnson and Johnson. 31. What? What are you talking 18. about? 18. What? 8. Wait, is this 32. Did you turn it on? Oh, there we go. 99. Hank, I'm, the tweet is now deleted. I've deleted the tweet. It's a big deal. 31. 12. 12? Tommy. TB12. Whoa. All right. Current Expos first, outfielder. First timer. Yeah. Mm. Whoa. All right. We'll see everyone on Monday. Have a good weekend. Love you guys. Yes.